total force is equal to zero. Acceleration is equal to zero. The change in velocity is equal to zero. And let me emphasize, I'm not saying the velocity is zero. All I'm saying is that the change is zero. If one of these is true, the other two are true. And so the problem was set up so that this is, I established that this is true right here. He's moving horizontally. Actually, from a vertical point of view, I established he's not moving up or down. So that part's true. Therefore, the other two vertically must be true. And then horizontally, I established that's true. And therefore, the other two must be true. Questions to hear. All right. And then the last one, which sort of messes with people's heads. Boom. Thank you. Uh, it's a spider. It's a spider. It's kind of big. <laughs> Someone will kill it. It, it might have seemed a little extreme there. My, my wife grew up around brown recluses, so she's got a real phobia of spiders. So, Yes, it is. Yes. Uh, it's ground in the carpet, away from your desk. Yeah, I, I gather. Uh, you're good. You're good. Was there anything? Where's the, I, you got it. I got it. It's brown down, brown over here somewhere. You got it. There, there. I'm yeah. stepping on it right now. Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. We'll be vacuumed up sometime in the next year. <laughs> no, they probably vacuumed this more than they vacuumed my office. It's like I got too much stuff on the floor. All right. The, as a side note, I think that was one of the harmless ones. That was not one of the, the bad ones. Just oh, yeah. Sorry. That. <laughs> Anyway, <coughs> awkward segue back to physics. Equilibrium. Oh, it's a equilibrium. All right, so the sled, I said that there's tension pulling that way and a friction going that way. So sled's in equilibrium. So the total force acting on the sled, Zero. yeah, because it's not moving up or down at all, so it's in vertical. It's what's called static equilibrium vertically. And then horizontally, it's dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic equilibrium means it's in equilibrium, but it's moving. Equilibrium does not automatically mean sitting still. As a matter of fact, an object can be sitting still and not be in equilibrium, or it's sitting still and is in equilibrium. All right. If the sled is in equilibrium, its velocity doesn't change. What does it say about the kid on the sled? What about his movement? He's not moving. He's not moving. Relative to? The sled. Right. So if the sled's in equilibrium and he's not moving relative to the sled, what do we know about him? He's not in equilibrium. He is in equilibrium. Yes, he is. 
Therefore, all these are true for the boy. So now let's go over to here to, if there's friction acting on the boy, the friction is going to be acting to the left or right if it does exist. What is going to cancel that? Because the total force has to be zero. So if there's friction acting on the kid, what's countering that? Is he being pulled by a rope? Yeah. The acceleration. The sled's being pulled by the rope. Acceleration. Not a force. No need to apologize. Weight is down. Normal force is down. Other, I didn't talk about any mysterious force acting on the boy. Uh, tension is acting on the sled. He's the kid's not holding onto a rope. So there's two friction acting on the kid. There is just a single pair of frictions. I'm saying between the boy. And the sled? Yeah. If there is friction, there would just be a single pair, one acting on the boy and one acting on the sled. Yeah. But since he's in equilibrium, there is actually no friction acting on him. So it's zero? It is zero. So why would when we did the, the guy pulling the boy on the sled, why is there, first, why was there friction? Because they were accelerating. They were not in equilibrium. That was the difference there. This kid is in equilibrium. His acceleration is zero. Total force is zero. That's the difference. Now, if you are trying this at home, you have, we'll just assume all of you have a child for right now. You put your child on the sled. You're pulling the sled horizontally, which means you're probably down here pulling. You're pulling the sled horizontally. There's a good chance that the child is going to fall off backwards if you pull very, really quickly. The difference in that, those situations is that one, if he's starting at rest and then starts to move, he's accelerating. His velocity changes. He's not in equilibrium. So there's gotta be something pulling him forward. It would be friction or if he's holding onto the sled, might be some normal force in there too. Also, realistically, you're not pulling a sled from down here. <laughs> You're pulling it from up here, so this rope is at an angle, and so that realistically, that sled's going to be bobbing up and down. So again, not an equilibrium there. So I set up a really nice, ideal situation in this problem where that sled is just moving smoothly. So it would have had to have had some friction to get him moving, assuming that he started at rest. But once he got to that, whatever that cruising speed is, no friction's acting on him. Will there be future problems where it won't be in equilibrium like this? In chapter four, we would get into the non-equilibrium. Okay. So if it said like the sled was accelerating, there would be friction? There would have to be something, and yeah, friction probably would be a good one. I probably would set it up so he's not holding on to the sled, just sitting on it. Okay. In which case, if he is accelerating to the right, which way would friction be acting on the kid? the right. And this goes back to what we had done on class last week. Sled, kid, if it were frictionless, the kid would go off towards the back of the sled, or potentially on camera here. So if the sled is being pulled that way, if it's frictionless, the boy would slide backwards on the sled. Friction opposes that motion, and so friction would act to the right. Questions? There. I saw a couple of furrowed brows, like uh, the person wants to ask a question, but. Right. We'll potentially move on. Other questions? Yes. Uh, again, I opened anything. You had a master set question? Mm -hmm. Brittany? Uh, This is 
going on into the sloping down the wall, and then one is moving up a little bit to into. So this is the part that confuses me. Okay. But down relative to the wall. I don't understand how it's All right. slipping up but moving down relative. Oh, I guess the box underneath it. So is that's down. sort of doing yeah. that kind of maneuver right there. Okay. I was hoping that's not what you were saying. Okay. I'm like, why are you trying to confuse us? <laughs> <laughs> See, so I start out, if you look at some of the older tests that, before I modify them, that look at the older tests, there's far fewer words. And then as I'm grading it, I realize, oh, there's now five different interpretations for this. So let me throw in a few more words just to eliminate some of these choices. And it ultimately ends up with more and more words. Just because I like questions with one answer instead of five completely different answers. Well, Childhood scars. I need to do it like you do, like the examples. Like you really have to kind of do it yourself to understand it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That, that was sufficient for you for that question, Brittany? Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? Isabella? That's right. I don't want to ask it. <laughs> you said you don't want to ask it? No. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to ask it anyway? I don't know if I should. It's about the push up problems. Okay. Because I watched your videos on like the Newton Saws, and I don't know if I just like was watching it and like hearing it and not listening or what. So but the, the first push up problem or the second one? I, it's not like, it's not specific, but it's just like, I know you're doing this, and then whenever I read it, I don't know. It feels like if the floor pushes up with more force, wouldn't it just be like... <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about a push-up, when you're, when you're down as low as you're going to get, mm -hmm. and you're at rest, and then you start moving upwards. So there's got to be an unbalanced force, because you go from a velocity of zero to a velocity of something else. So the net, the velocity changes, therefore there's acceleration, therefore there's some net force. The forces are not balanced, acting on you. As you start slowing, and then you reach some maximum speed, something small presumably, but then you start slowing down because you don't go, you do start slowing down. So at that point, your velocity is changing again, and therefore you have to be, therefore, you're accelerating, therefore, there's a net force acting on you then, too. So that's more related to the second one than the first one. Okay. What I think, are you guys talking about? What are you guys talking about? What, uh, there's a push up problem on the master set. 14 inches. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I expected you to know every single one of these just from memory. Did master sets in your last class? Oh, I didn't have your group do them at that point. No. Oh. No. I apologize. I was thinking. I I guess it was the the course after that where I started requiring it. Yeah. Okay. Are you requiring us to duly turn them in to you? Yes. Where is the area that we're turning in now? Where's the what? Where's the area where I plug it in on the blackboard? Uh. You would, if I didn't give you a, I don't uh, for that. I'm confusing the two groups, which ones I did for which, <laughs> you would either hand it in on paper or email it to me. Okay. Because um, I didn't know I had to come in. Oh. I listened to you and you were like, well, I'm not looking because I work all one hour and take a quiz and test. That's why I know what you've done yeah, so the, the master sets are to be handed in, submitted either, if I didn't give you a place uh, where you could do it online, then email it to me. And, uh, you know, we're working out the gigs. So. Or hand it in. I mean, if you have it in on paper, I'll be glad to take it. I personally, I prefer grading on paper than on a screen, but like, thanks to the pandemic, I can now do it on the screen too. So I've done some homework questions. I didn't do the master sets. They have these tests. 
Okay, so the homework questions are there for your own personal gain. Master sets are, that's the one for the grade. Lydia. Yeah. Yeah. So, real, realistically, if I, I I'm not going to grade it before tomorrow morning. So realistically, I I think eight thirty is when I'm in office. Then I got a class that's starting at nine. So I, I recommend doing it before midnight tonight, just so that you don't have to stress about it tomorrow morning. But I have a question on number 10. Um, it's the one about the box. Um, the I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, number 10, you got the two forces acting on it. Yeah, how do you calculate, the, like, after time has passed, how do you calculate the maximum? The maximum? Right, so the force is not, the force is constant. Forces are constant uh, in part A, so the time is irrelevant. The only thing that the four seconds tells you is that they shift at that point. Yes, that's up. Uh, for, I remember different things happening now. Um, I didn't write down the heads and tails listed. Um, oh, you don't remember what the heads and tails was? Okay. Well, I mean, I remember what heads and tails was, but. Uh, as best you can. That I mean, if I if uh, I want to be completely opposite, I will just take it that way. If I'm asking you to add these three vectors, so again, you just start with one of them, and it doesn't matter which one. You draw it. So if I start with this one. I want to draw it the same magnitude, same direction. And a slight advantage of the board in the old room was the fact that it never erased, so I could always make marks with my fingers about the game in, but I don't have that luxury on this board. It's clean. All right. So that's my starting point right there, and I just drew one of the arrows. Again, it should be the same magnitude, same direction. Then I take another one. So now I got a new starting point for the last one. So then I take the last one. I probably didn't hit too long there. I never liked him. You never liked doing that? <laughs> Not precise enough for you? No, that looks good for you. And so that would be the answer there. I looked at the mill. I was looking at a problem in the book and I was like, <coughs> like 30 degrees one way and 40 degrees the next way, and the result was 50. How did it become 50? So, uh, if it were, if, if you're dealing with two that are perpendicular to each other, like in, I think, problem 10, they're perpendicular to each other. If I've got something, if I have 30 newtons to the right, and 40 newtons up, obviously not drawn to scale. The resultant is from where you begin to where you end. <clears throat> and if they're perpendicular to each other, I have a right triangle, and so I'd use Pythagorean theorem. So 30 squared plus 40 squared is C squared, which C would end up being 50. That's, I'm gonna guess that's where you, what you were seeing. If you were seeing a 30 degree angle and a 40 degree angle, I think there was a, I don't know if it was a chapter two. There was, there was a problem where they did give you different angles. But again, you're just supposed to sort of eyeball the answer on that one. I think, I was thinking that was a chapter three question that did that. Okay. Um, so I've got 30 squared plus 40 squared, that's 2,500. Yes. And then 
How do I get 50? Square root. Because that's C squared. And so you take the square root of 2,500 and you get 50. You there? Certainly. Other questions? So Amina? how would you find B and C then? If I'm applying two forces to an object, let's say that we're both pushing on this table. I'm going to push with 40 newtons of force, and as we saw in the hallway the other day, you're stronger than I am, and so you would push with, say, 100 newtons of force. If we push against each other, what is that telling you about the total force? If you're pushing with 100 and I'm pushing with 40, What's the total force acting on the table if we're pushing against each other? 360. What did you say? 100 140. Okay. So it would be 60. 60, yeah. The total force would be 60. I cancel out only part of what you're pushing, but you overpower. <laughs> Suppose I want us to push the table with the most amount of force. How would we, how would we both push on the table so that we get the maximum out of it? Sorry? Yes. So it would be then to add it to Yes. And so you get the biggest bang for the force if you're working together and the biggest loss for the for the buck fighting against each other. That was a lamp gem right there. So it's what? A life gym. That's what physics is. One life gym after another. Yes, Brittany. Uh, no, sorry, Bertano. Yes, um, I have a question about number eight for the units. Um, is there only one answer for all three of them, or are you looking for more than one? If there's more than one, then yes, that was number you said? Yeah, there's just a lot of. Yeah, there there potentially is more than one answer for for those.